In the early 80s, when the mini truck guys split away from the custom van scene, one of the wildest modifications they could do to their trucks was cut a convertible top. There wasn't nothing cooler than popping your top off and cruising the streets or hitting the beach with your mini truck. These days, with the mini truck scene as popular as ever, it still draws a lot of attention having a convertible top. How you doing guys? Today we're gonna do some more mini trucking stuff. We're gonna go follow up on the mini trucking convertible top video that I did on a Chevy S10. Now in that video, you also saw a Nissan convertible that we used in the intro. This is it, this is Project Playback, my son Dante Walker's truck. And we finally have it home in the garage doing some touch-ups and much needed things that we need to do. And I figure while I'm here, I'll address a lot of questions that I got off the first video on how to do a convertible top that everybody asked. I got tons of emails, tons of messages, lots of questions on YouTube about various things about the convertible top. Some myths, lots of questions. Um, should I do this, should I do that? Where do I get the kit? We're gonna answer all those questions that we can think of in this video. To start with, we're gonna address one of the biggest concerns and biggest comments that people have with convertible tops on a mini truck. The first thing people say is, how much water does it leak in there? This isn't the 80s. This isn't even the early 90s anymore where a lot of them leaked. A lot of people bought the kit. Many backyard guys did it, but they did it according to the directions. And the directions are pretty close, but you still need to consider one thing, water management. Why does water get in? Well, the way they designed the plastic bows, some of the bows were meeting up from the door, the top of the door frame, right up to the top of the plastic bow on the top. And there's nothing to stop the water from getting in there. So it leaked. A lot of other people never put uh, silicone right up against between the roof and the plastic kit. Why didn't they? Well, some of the directions back then didn't say it, but they do now. And a lot of shops didn't know what they were doing when they did it. A lot of people just took it to your basic automotive shop instead of a lot of you mini truckers out there started your own shops and you did phenomenal work. But the basic automotive shops just put the kit on, didn't really pay attention to too much of that. And some of them did leak. Now, almost every one of them will get a drop or two, sometimes a few more drops, but nothing too bad. But I've seen some early 80s kits and some really, or late 80s kits, early 90s kits that leak like a sieve. And it was, it was just horrible. There are ways around that you can, you can do different things. So we're gonna talk about that. One of them is rubber seals. And one of you guys out there asked a question. With the kits being this old and these being new old stock kits, how good is the rubber anymore? It's gotta be old, deteriorating, things like that. The thing about some of these kits is that a lot of them are new old stock but there's pieces missing in them. And all the kits I've bought in the last five years from airbagit.com, they put new rubber seals in there. Not to mention, if you go back and watch my video for the first video I made on cutting a convertible top on an S10, you see I showed the different various rubber seals that you can get and you can get them on eBay, Amazon, things like that. And they're brand new seals shaped the way you want them and done the way you want them. So. The rubber that you get in those kits, perfectly fine. It's, it's up to date, it's new. I've used them, they work great. So, another question, everybody wants to know, will you cut the top on my truck? No, I will not. I've done about 100 tops now, probably right about exactly 100. But hey man, I'm getting old, I'm getting lazy, I got no time. I'd love to help every one of you out, but I can't do it. I just don't have the time or the room. And sometimes the liability in that is not a good idea either. Um, so I can't help you, but there are a lot of mini truckers in your area who can help you. There's a lot of guys out there doing a lot of great mods and stuff. Some of you guys still have shops, hit those guys up. They do some phenomenal work and we've seen them on the mini truck pages, mini truck takeover, OG coalition, mini truck, where are they now? All the great pages, mini truck and life. They all got great stuff out there and guys are still doing it. So hit those guys up, they'll help you out. So where do you get the kit? Everybody says, do you offer the kit? Do you want to have one for a Mazda? Do you have one for the Chevy S10? No, I do not. I do not sell them. All the kits that used to come from AIM Industries and Radical Tops are all sold through Airbagit now. Airbagit.com. Hit them up. They still have kits. Now, not every truck has a kit anymore. I, I think they still offer the Chevy S10, the Nissan trucks, the Datsuns, uh, even, even uh, the, the Dodge Dakota, I believe they might still have it. 
One of the ones they don't offer anymore is the Mazda B2000 and the various uh, versions of the Mazda truck. But there is a dude out there that offers them. I'll put his name right down here because I can't remember off the top of my head trying to get everything I need to do for this video. But he is offering the repot kits and his are very nice. Great dude, hit him up. He does offer for the Mazda. So you Mazda, Mazda boys, get your top, go topless now. It's gonna be awesome. Hit him up. Okay, in my last video, and a lot of people have done this across the US in the past, but this is the real trick. Cut your angle right here on your windshield frame or on, on your door frame and mate in this top to the windshield frame. And that helps. Uh, I addressed it in the video in the first one on why you do this so your plastic cap on your door doesn't just hide behind here and tuck in. Otherwise it just leaks right there because there's no way to seal that up. You fill it up with silicone, then you can't get your door open. So we started doing this trick right here. Now this works with the rain gutter uh, trucks as well, but this trick works great with the S10 and the uh, Nissan truck that has the, the wider door frames. Some of the rain gutter trucks are a little trickier because you need that rain gutter up here. So that's gonna be a little tricky and I'll show you about that uh, in, in uh, later in this video. Now, uh, with this one here, usually you would put, you would uh, silicone seal it right here and then cross your bows over the top of here. Well, my son hasn't done that yet because he doesn't really take it out too much in the rain and he hasn't gotten any leaks up here, which surprised me because usually your top bows right here, it'll get right in here, but it's got so much silicone on the inside. It goes through here, hits that internal rain gap and goes right down the door. It doesn't come in the truck which is why we do this. And it's a nice kind of clean look. Now, along with this, while you can see it, people said to mention uh, the window frame. You have to make sure you cut the, the outer portion of your window frame on the roof section of the door frame and right here. Why? When your glass rolls up, your glass is right here. When you open and close it, it needs that, pe that piece of metal that's normally right here, gone. So your window can clear that. So that's why that's removed. You put a little rubber right here, no window leaks. He took his rubber off. He hasn't finished cleaning it up. We're still doing a lot of things to the truck. So that is gone. Now on the Chevy S10, when you do it up here, mine is still under construction when I did it on the video. I had some guy send me a nasty message. Oh, it looks like crap. And what you really need to do is do this and do that. I love it when other mini truckers tell you what you need to do. Do you ever get that at the show? Sure, we all have. What he didn't realize is the truck's under construction. I'm not done. Since then, it has been welded to the top of the frame smoothed out, ready for filler, and it's gonna be done. But all he wanted to do is cry about how it looks like crap. Well, there are those who do and those who talk and criticize. We all know what some of you guys out there do, and we all know what some, a few of them don't do. That's fine. But we were gonna weld it up right here, and eh, he didn't really wanna do that. And he didn't wanna mold the uh, door frame to his roof. We'll show that a little later. But that's the section that, that comes right here. So that addresses this piece right here. So another piece, speaking of window frames on certain trucks, let's talk about window regulators. Now, many, many trucks have your glass in your door that the regulator is in the door itself. So when you cut the frame off, the window rolls up and down freely. Well, with S10s and Dodge Dakotas, the window regulator is at the back of the glass up here. You cut your roof off your window when you roll it up and down, wants to fall into the door. So they sell a window regulator kit. They no longer sell that anymore. They only have it for the Dodge Dakota, not the Chevy S10. So you have to figure out how to make your own. Now, I don't have a picture of one currently, but if you go to Johnny Garage Johnson's uh, mini truck and garage page, he shows his, dude's a good dude. He's got some nice stuff. His truck is bitching. Check him out. He shows a couple different versions of the one he used and explains it a little as well. And you can probably fabricate one of your own. The trick is to have the bar going right down the center of your door. One piece of metal off the bar goes and bolts right behind where the door handles are. The other bolts right to the bottom of the door frame. So it has a channel to ride up and down. Then you have a metal piece about this big with two pieces welded straight up and down here to hold, to ride that channel. You bolt those two to the two bolts that bolt onto your, wind, your side window. When you roll it up and down, those pieces of metal hold it nice and tight and ride that channel up and down. That's the trick behind that. Now, since you can't buy the kit anymore, you probably could buy the Dakota kit and modify it. The only thing, it's the same thing, just measurements, just different length, things like that. Some of you mini truckers, if you're cutting your tops off, running tandems, body dropping trucks, 
I know damn well you guys know how to cut that and change the length of it to make it work for you. It, it, that, that kind of thing is nothing for some of you guys doing that kind of work, so don't even sweat that. Now, the other thing is, people ask a lot of questions about seat belts. Almost every truck that I've ever seen has a shoulder belt. You've got the mount at the floor, you got the mount at the shoulder, and then it comes across. Pretty much what, like a three-point three point mount, something like that? You cut the roof off, you got a lot of seat belts. Let's go, and let's go inside the cab, I'll show you how, what we do about that. There's many aftermarket companies that sell aftermarket seat belts that are just lap belts. Okay, so we'll take that one step further in coolness. You can actually get color matched lap seat belts in various lengths, styles, and colors to match your ride. Check this out. We actually ordered the turquoise to match the turquoise on the truck. They're just lap belts. They bolt in stock locations, bolt right down. They're pretty cheap. You can get these belts from seatbeltsplus.com. I can't remember the cost offhand, but my son bought it on a high school part-time job salary. So I know you guys can afford it. Although if you're mini truckers like me, we're probably all broke because that's what mini trucking does. It's like throwing money out the window, right? Anyway, that's your seatbelt problem and that's how you solve that. Now, another concern people always ask, did you weld in a cab brace? Back in the day, they had a cab brace that they would, they would bolt in across the top of the back of the cab. I don't know what that was for, but apparently it stiffened up the cab. Well, I've never had a problem or never welded one up in a truck that I've done yet. Uh, take that back. I did do it in a walkthrough, but that was different. We wanted to support the corners of the cab along with the bed since we did a walkthrough with a convertible. Now, when you shut, open and shut your door, when you do a convertible, that back wall has a tendency to sometimes move a little bit. Now they had the brace that bolted right to the back, straight across. That thing didn't do much at all. Another way people did it was they had it bolt across the back, go down, and kind of go forward with a little gusset at an angle in the corner. That kind of helped stiffen up that cab wall. You can do that. I don't do that personally, but it never hurts to have, to go that extra step. Uh, you know, we always try to say safety is of the highest regard or always, always err on the side of safety, whatever saying you want to use. So anything you can do extra to make it more safe and cool, why not knock yourself out? But those two are options. I don't think Airbag it sells the cab wall pieces anymore. I'm sure somebody has a YouTube video on it. If not, they suggested one of the old videos. You can also get that thing done. So, but now the new kits, some of the new kits come with the metal ch channel on the cab wall right here. This one needs to be touched up. It's been scratched and beat over the years. Uh, this is what happens when you build a mini truck for a uh, 16 year old kid for his first ride. He gets little bumps and scrapes. So we're gonna take care of all that. We're gonna touch it up, make it look nice. But with the metal cab wall piece, your cab is a flimsy. This thing is solid as a rock. So that addresses that. So the next thing people like to talk about is water management with your rubber seals. Now, some people put your rubber seals right here up on top of the bow. I personally like them better when they're on the roof itself instead of up here because it offers a clean look. These rubber seals that you would do up here is more or less like a black hose or the flat hose type that goes from side to side. Now, when you do that, you want it to go all the way across and then hang down a little bit over the window. So when water follows it, when the top is compressed, it will flow over the top and drip onto the glass. If not, it has a tendency to work its way through here. I've even seen some people sit and cry about, hey, my top leaks. Mine's leaked since the 80s. Mine's leaked since the 90s. They don't even have a rubber seal up here. Plastic on plastic does not keep rain out. I don't care how hard you compress it. That's gonna be a problem. Some people do have the rubber seal and it leaks. It's time to get a new seal, maybe make it a little tighter. Do what you can. Some, they make thicker seals you can get in there. You do them across here and you do them across the back. That way water doesn't drip inside onto the inside of the uh, truck. Because many of you guys have amps mounted on the back cab wall. We do. And the last thing you want is rock water running down in there and ruining your cool sweet sounds. So let's take a look at the uh, convertible top and we'll show you what we mean with the rubber that hangs out and over to the windshield. Now, this is obviously the roof. It's been beat. It's been uh, bent to the mill. It needs a lot of touch-ups. We could even probably replace this rubber at this point. But as you can see, here's the rubber gasket on the top of the roof section. There's a foam gasket inside here. We, we added that also for a secondary. This one's a foam rubber. This one's an actual silicone rubber. It goes all the way across and it kind of hangs out 
about almost a half inch over the top of the ledge. So when you close your window, it goes under here. So when water runs onto this, when it's compressed, it doesn't leak to the edge and go, go right through here. It follows the rubber and drips on the outside of the glass and runs down the side of the glass. Now up here, on the other side of your plastic and your roof, we had to add the silicone there because water will get through there and come down in. Same with the channel right here. It will go in there. Now here's your window frame and your roof. Those are screwed and mounted together so they're permanently in there. Well, permanent's a relative word to a mini trucker, right? So that they're not going anywhere. Then we added our silicone rubber and filled up the channel across the window and all the way down. Now, a cleaner look would have been to weld these together, smooth it out, make it look nice, make it look sexy. We weren't going that far. That far. When we built this truck, we were only going for a first ride, his first car, and wanted something really cool. Well, accidentally, a lot of people dig the truck. It turned out almost iconic. So now it is what it is. But we're gonna update it and clean up a bunch of this stuff. So that's mounted there. The silicone's right here, so it does not leak down into here. And we have your silicone across the bottom here. So when the water hits it, it does not go onto that. It rolls off of this down at the bottom. There'll be rubber seals down here. We have some down here. You can't see them on the video. Same as the front to offer like a compression seal. We spoke earlier about when you cut the window frame, so the glass will be able to get through there. Otherwise, it, it kind of sealed the glass on each side like a window frame does. We cut that outer edge off, used a black pinch molding, the wind lace. You can find this on a lot of old uh, old cars had a lot of this. Any, any of your restoration shops, eBay, Amazon sells wind lace in almost any color you can get, mostly black. You push it on, then we got a rubber seal in here where the window goes right up against that and rides that. Water, if water gets in back here, it doesn't get past the glass. But when we come down here, sometimes if it gets behind the glass here, it hits here and runs out. Very rarely do we get it in here. Now, if you're going fast enough or the wind is hellacious enough, which it always is, you'll get a few drops in here. Up at the front, you'll get a few drops. But you might need a rag, you'll get three or four drops on your leg. It's not like the old days where you're basically turning a hose on each side of your truck and soaking your pant leg down. But we didn't care back then. Why? Because we had a convertible mini truck and it was pretty sweet. Another question somebody asked, where do I find the measurements for the kits? Well, the measurements are on airbagit.com site, but just for all of you guys that don't have it, I'll post it right here at the end. There'll be the measurements for every single truck. It'll show you uh, roof measurements from the windshield back. It'll show you from the back of the door forward where to put the line right here, and then you just make the line together. It'll show you from the top of the door down, then you draw your line all the way across and meet it around the back. And then you have to cut off the middle or the, uh, I believe it's an eighth inch or, or whatever it is. You gotta watch my first video. I don't have the numbers on me, but I'll post the numbers right here at the end of the video. So you know where to make your cuts for your existing truck. Now, one final question somebody asked is how do I know where to make the cuts right here? Well, aside from the measurement, people are confused from the front of the windshield, how far back. Okay, so you have your paint, then you have your rubber or metal trim, depending on what truck you have. Now you follow the glass all the way up where it stops at the trim. That's where your measurement starts. From there back, you do your line. Then you do your next line so far behind, behind that line, and that's how much you cut out of the middle. But do not start past the rubber. Start from the front of the glass, right where it touches that, and then measure back. I like to use a compass or a protractor, whatever that is. If you got the little needle in there and you got your pencil on this side, I put a sharpie in there, I set it, I put, I put it right there, I draw it all the way across, gives me a perfect line all the way across. And that's how you do that right there. So that's where you need to be. Any other questions? Hit me up in the comment section. I'd love to hear your comments. Unless you're gonna bash the truck, then it, as a mini trucker, we ain't got time for that. We're out here having a good time, enjoying our mini trucking lifestyle, like we have for the past, what, 30, 35 years, whatever it is. And hopefully we can continue it into the future and have a really good time. And anybody watches this video, I really appreciate you guys. Anybody cuts a top, hey, I love you guys. Convertible tops is where it's at. So. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I answered a few questions and uh, maybe helped some of you guys out. But hey, any questions, hit me up. Maybe I'll throw in a few uh, other uh, mini truck convertible uh, tops that other people have, just for some eye candy so you can see all the different cool tops that everybody's had over the years. You guys know who you are. Take care, I appreciate you.